A simple trick that I often recommend for designing maps is to use similar colors for similar things and different colors for different things. Hi, I'm Heather and I'm a cartographer. In this video, I'll show you some examples of making color choices for maps in ArcGIS Pro. There are a lot of layers in this map. I've already done some work to declutter it by setting visibility ranges and some clustering so features appear and disappear as you zoom in and out. Next, I need to work on symbology. There's five different types of point symbols on this map, two kinds of lines, and four kinds of polygons. I want to do everything I can to make all of these symbols easy for people to recognize and to tell apart. The less they have to consult the legend, the better. At this scale, I can see parks, trails, bus routes, and bus terminals. I'll make the parks green. Parks are almost always green, it's what people expect, so it's an easy place to start. I'll also make the trails green. I won't use exactly the same green as the parks, but they sure look a lot more related than they did before, don't they? Next, I'll do bus routes. My biggest concern here is to make sure that people can tell the bus route lines apart from the trail lines. So green, anything close to green, is out of the question. I want to convey that these are very different things, so I'll choose a very different color. I'll go with purple. So now it's clear that these lines are different from these lines. And if I use a good map title, I think it's going to be pretty easy to guess which line is which. Next, I'll do the bus terminals. I think this turquoise color is too similar to green. I want it to look like it's similar to the bus routes instead. In fact, not just similar, but the same. They're part of the same transit system, so I'm going to use the exact same purple. So now I've made all the natural features in my map green and all the transit features purple. I'll continue this pattern to symbolize the other features in the map. Trees, horticultural beds, community gardens, grass, these should all be green. Bus stops, bus routes with shelters, these should all be purple. Finally, I want to include public washrooms, and they don't really fit into either theme, so I'll give them a new color, blue. Of course, now I have a problem where a lot of the things are hard to tell apart. But spend some time experimenting, and you'll find that you can achieve a lot of variation within one color. I've symbolized bus routes, bus stops, bus stops with shelters, and bus terminals all differently, even though they're all purple. And I did the same thing with the nature layers. I made them all green. If the nature layers were all different colors, you can see how cluttered and confusing they become. With this map, I'm spending all of my energy on trying to understand this area. What do all of these symbols mean? By contrast, here, I don't waste my time trying to sort that out. I see immediately that this is a park, it has some washrooms, and there are nearby bus stops. I don't know right away what all of the things inside the park are, but that's okay because they're supporting details and I can consult the legend for them. In the meantime, I do get the impression that this park is full of interesting things. Well, this one is probably an empty field. My map is complete. Remember how difficult it was to read before? Now it's a lot more obvious what's going on. I'll still include a legend, but I bet a lot of people won't have to look at it. And because I've used similar colors to represent similar things, it feels like a map with two or three layers instead of 11. When people read your map, they are going to assume that things that look similar are similar, and things that look different are different. This is especially true for colors. You can and should use this to your advantage.